Good morning. Yes, I'm just starting my day. Stopped here in Snyder, Texas last night. Uh, the uh, there's a pilot here, Vel Velero, whatever it is. I guess the pilot is the fuel, and the Velero is the store. Yeah, not a bad little location here. Plenty of parking if you get here early enough. But overall, nice evening and a nice morning out here today. Beautiful temperatures. And, uh, oh, I could have went out that way. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know this place. So, um, this trip back is going to be a little bit interesting. And the reason why I say that is because I was doing my calculating of my hours yesterday. And I am literally recapping hours now, and it's kind of hard to explain all of that without getting really extremely boring and technical. But after recapping, I got 11 hours back to last night, so that's what I have with me today. But tomorrow I get two hours, and then the following day I get four. So we're gonna have some short days in the next couple days. Not much of showing anything, or probably, and I'll just use that opportunity to work on video on the video <laughs> why not eh yeah i'm really enjoying the series of joseph i hope you guys are too it's just such a fascinating series about how god blessed joseph for an ultimate purpose to preserve his family i think it's pretty amazing it really is all right dear lord i pray that you be with me today that you would protect my truck from any of the animals and protect the animals on the road from my truck and keep myself and the other drivers out here safe all over North America. As a matter of fact, how about in the entire world? I pray this in Yeshua's name, amen.
Well, I stopped for my 30-minute break at this nice little rest area here, and I think the place is called Ocate. I don't know how you say it. I think it's Ocate, and we're still in New Mexico. And it's a very peaceful area out here. Um, cool temperatures though today, but still very, very nice. This is a really neat little rest area. It has uh, little individual places where you can actually make your own barbecues. It actually has a um, fireplace in all the little barbecue areas, which I think is kind of neat. Um, I'm noticing that it is chilly enough out here where a lot of the trees out here are starting to lose their leaves So winter is upon us for sure, but this is a nice little place to stop. It's very very quiet here the bathrooms are reasonably clean and um, Yeah, I would actually love to stop at a place like this um, At the end of my day, but I'm not at the end of my day. I still have a little ways to go I still have another four four and a half hours to go but um, I normally don't show too many of the rest areas that I stop at, but this one here, I don't get too many opportunities to stop in New Mexico, so is uh, it, it was worth showing you guys. And I just thought it was neat. I've seen rest areas that have barbecue pits, but I've never actually seen uh, rest areas that actually have individual fireplaces, and that's what this one has, individual fireplaces. But uh, yeah, it was kind of neat.
away once again for another day, but it's gonna be a very short day. Yeah, two and a half hours is all I get today. Well, I mean, I have three hours, but I don't know of any other places I can stop in between. The uh, Pilot Flying J out there in Cheyenne is where I'm gonna stop because that's about two and a half hours. And then tomorrow I'll be able to drive a little bit longer, maybe six, six hours. <laughs> But hey, it's all I got left of ours. That's what I'm recapping right now. So, uh, yeah, pretty well what we're gonna see here on the I-25 is we're gonna see, um, you know, the funny thing is I've never been down the 25 um, through Denver. I've never, usually when I come up to Denver, I go around the, the loop that goes around the city and then uh, I head the other direction or head onto the 70. Never been down the 25 right through Denver. And the reason why I'm gonna do it today is in case some of you have never seen Denver, I think we'll get a nice view of the city. And it is a Saturday, so the traffic should be a little bit easier, hopefully today. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And um, looks like our weather's holding out, which is good. It's been really, really windy. But uh, I'm really hoping to get back to Zuri and not have to deal with a whole bunch of bad weather. <laughs> but it is the winter time, that's to be expected, I guess, right? Yep, so, two hours and 24 minutes and our day will be over. A lot of mileage today.
about 20 miles away from my stop and I'm glad I'm not driving much further because this wind is really, really strong. It just started about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, and it's, I, I've got a pretty good amount of weight on this truck and I am really fighting to keep it on the truck, uh, on the, uh, on the road right now. And it's very windy. And as if you see that little tumbleweed go across the road, it's, yeah, it's blowing right against my driver's door. Yeah, if you are light driving down this road, man, that is not going to be a pleasant run. That's going to be a bad trip. But I haven't seen, as a matter of fact, I haven't seen a whole lot of trucks coming the other way or passing me. Maybe they just knew better to stay off the road because of the wind. Jeez. Wouldn't be surprised if I seen something on its side along route here. Hopefully not, but I wouldn't be surprised.
Good morning. I am starting early, yes. The sun is just making its way up. And I am making my way down Dead Man's Pass in Pendleton, Oregon. And this is a sort of hill you really don't want to rush down if you're heavy. <laughs> you, just, you don't really want to use your brakes at all. <coughs> Excuse me, just let the Jake do its work. I mean, right now, with the weight that I have right now, I'm in ninth. That's good. I don't know. I haven't had to touch the brakes at all. And if you come up to a corner like this, you just fan them a little bit. I usually put about as much pressure on them as uh, as you would if you're going to step on a, an egg without breaking it. Like a hard-boiled egg. Some people say regular egg, but a hard-boiled egg. You can press on it without breaking the shell. This is such a nice drive down this 84 like this. <coughs> it's a beautiful view. God has some really amazing countryside. Sorry, I had drinking my coffee earlier and it just went down the wrong tube. And yeah. So, um, there has been one disaster after another down in British Columbia. Uh, we had a major mudslide along Highway 1 on, on uh, eastbound or eastbound westbound near Hope. Um, another part of our highway got washed out near Spence's Bridge area, I think it was. Or, no, no, maybe not quite there, but the bottom of Jackass Mountain, that whole area got washed out, so the highway's gone. Um, Coquilla Highway was closed because of flooding. Drivers are more or less stranded in the Lower Mainland. The only way to get out of there is to head south. So the BC Alberta drivers right now, they're kind of limited on what they can do and where they can go. So, uh, that's not good. It's not good at all. But that's what happens when you have a super dry summer. But you know the bizarre thing is? To get mudslides and having our roads being washed out in, in the uh, in the fall, that's really unheard of. Usually that happens in the spring, you know, after, you know, a winter run out when all the water starts coming down from the mountains. This is when you get these little mudslides here and there, but in the fall, I don't know, this is bizarre. It just goes to show you how much of a hot summer we had and how dry it was that it dried out all the roots of the trees up there. We didn't get a whole lot of su uh, rain up there. Now we're getting it all now. It's crazy. So apparently, yeah, even in Abbotsford, uh, whole areas are flooded out. The Sumas border crossing is closed because they're flooded out. It's bizarre. And apparently the town of Merritt was on evacuation alert. I don't know if they actually evacuated. And it was because they were being flooded out too and it was affecting their water systems and sewage systems. I guess they were worried about the sewage systems making their way into the regular water system. I don't know what happened with that. There's like 5,000 people in Merritt. So, I mean, that would be pretty nasty. And the only place they can go is, is Kamloops. They can't go the other way because that's closed off. So this isn't the best start to a fall winter season. Just bizarre weather conditions we're getting. Anyway, I really don't know what you can see from here. <laughs> you probably can't see a whole lot down there, but this is such a nice view. Anyway, we are hoping to make our way through the Bellevue area about 11 o'clock. We wanted to time it so we're not going through there during rush hour, and hopefully we can get back uh, to the sh or to the receiver. We can get to the receiver and drop our load around 2, maybe 2, 2.30, depending on what the traffic is going to be like. And then we got three days off.
I don't even know if I'm even gonna get across the border today. And I say that because they're having flooding issues in the Ferndale area. I don't know if they have it completely taken care of or if it's alternating or if they've got the uh, a detour set up. Samish Island back behind me. Um, they just got an evacuation alert. It just came over my phone because of flooding. From all the flooding that's going on in the Lower Mainland and in the canyon and on the Coquilla Highway, Vancouver is officially cut off from the rest of Canada. That's what the headline said on one of the newspapers. I gotta get around this guy. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I wanna see what's going on. This is the best lane to be in anyway, because people leave the interstate. Besides, I'd rather be, I'd rather have access to the shoulder if I need it. And now, as soon as you get in this lane, that one takes right off. You know the way it is. <laughs> But I'll be very, very happy if I can get across the border today. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. Because if they have some areas that are, they're expecting some serious flooding today. Uh, more rain is supposed to be coming in. But I don't, I'm seeing an ugly cloud that's above us up there, but I don't really know if it's already raining in the area where they're expecting the flooding or not. went by a sign that said that that the road was closed at exit or um, mile marker 242 and we're at mile marker 242 but the sign says accident ahead so I don't know what's going on here I wonder if this is one of the detours or one of the issues we're having because of the flood the waters uh, I had my high hopes uh, up that we were actually going to get across the border today. That may not happen now. Ay, ay, ay. Just get over this hill a little bit here. We can get a look and see what's going on. I'm telling you something. These floods are just been causing nothing but chaos everywhere. This rain that we've been getting. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen here now. So far, I have traveled the whole two miles in the last hour. We just haven't gone anywhere. But at least we're moving now. And we're taking a nice country drive. La 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. When hair grows on my face, I become stupid. I apologize. Maybe I should grow this for the winter time. Grow it right down to here. Oh, too good to be true. It's all coming to a stop again up here. <coughs> trying to see where the road is washed out so bad. Don't see it. Not even this ditch down here has any water in it. But I will say this, the lake over there is really high. Uh -huh. Makes you wonder. How bad it's gonna be. I hope that wind isn't hitting the microphone. If it is, I apologize. Yeah, sorry about that if the mic was 
getting hit by the wind. It always sounds like crackling when the wind gets it. I apologize for that. Well, anyway, I really don't know. Really don't know how far we're going, how long this is going to take. This took forever just to get on this little stretch road, so I don't know how long it's going to take to get back on there. I think it's, they're going to take us back onto the highway again up here. And then we got to take another detour. What are we, what, what's going on here? Are we rocking and rolling here? Come on, truck. Uh, you know, when it gets this bad, when these delays become this bad, you almost have to make a joke out of it because there's no point on getting angry about it. It's not going to change anything by getting angry. I mean, you could get angry and <laughs> start punching things, but that's when you hurt yourself and it ain't worth it. So, at least it's sunny. It's not miserable out. Like I said, we have a little bit of a country drive here at about four miles, three miles an hour. Well, I've been sitting here now for 20 minutes in this spot, haven't even moved. As you can tell, I even had time to shave. Just stick my head out the window, look in the mirror and shave. Uh, we finally made it back on the uh, I-5. Put a hair on me from shaving. Wow, that was a long wait. And it ain't over yet. Because uh, we gotta deal with this in Ferndale now. I think they got another detour down there. And it's all because of flooding. So, uh, we'll go as far as we can. We got 28 miles to go. Jeez. It's taking a long time to cross the border. It is today anyway. to South Surrey, which is sweet, as I did not think I was going to make it across the border today the way the delays were. Oh man, what a day. But we are going to make it to our destination, we are going to make it to the customer and nobody is going to be upset because we are still going to be early, which is uh, one of the main reasons why when I do drive I use as many hours as I can through my day, like if I can use the 11 I will, without going into violation of course. Um, The more hours you can use, the better, because then you can more or less um, guarantee that you're going to get to your location. Sometimes you'll even be a little bit early, and it makes and, and it helps when you have problems like what I had there, the road closure. That does not help at all. So I am heading down to Loblaws to drop this trailer. And then I'm bobtailing back to the yard. And that is going to be it for me tonight. And for a few days. And then I already know what my back load is. After my reset. It is going to be to uh, Colorado area. Or should I say, uh, let's, tr let's get a little bit more precise. Um, Denver area. We'll be taking a load down there.
morning. Uh, just enjoying another sunrise out in the beautiful USA. We are in Idaho at the current time. We're making our way towards, I do believe it's Aurora, Colorado, where we're doing a delivery of frozen bread. And then I'm picking up some, I do believe it's flour from Commerce City. I've been there before. And then bringing it back to Abbotsford. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about all the flooding we had out in British Columbia. It was pretty amazing that every single way out of Vancouver, except for the border crossing, was severed. And a lot of hoarding was going on, even some looting, just really terrible. A lot of animals died on the farms. Just a terrible situation. And a lot of those people are still affected by it financially and their livelihoods might be totally ruined now and um, because a lot of the uh, flooding would, would not be covered under their insurance because their insurance, their home insurance probably, if they didn't choose it, um, the flooding would just cover in case your pipes burst, not a natural disaster. If you had a natural disaster um, Claws in there that they were going to cover, then you're okay. But I think a lot of people didn't have that. So if you can just continue to keep people in prayer in British Columbia, especially in Merritt as well, Maxqui, and the people that lost their lives, that one lady that lost her life up on the 99 from the mudslide, just not a very good thing. Not a great way to bring in a winter. And normally we don't have mudslides and things like this until the spring when the when the, the fall off of the water comes down from the mountains from the snow melt yeah, this is very unheard of to see this happening right now so if you could please keep these people in prayer that would be really really nice yeah last night uh, I made my way over Dead Man's Pass over in uh, Oregon that was a bit of a messy situation it was a bit, uh, it was really foggy, it was snowing up there, and um, yeah, I didn't record any of it because a lot of it was pitch black, you couldn't see nothing anyway, and um, well, maybe one of these days I'll get myself a camera that actually takes a nice picture at night. My big camera, my big camera, my cinematic camera takes wonderful pictures at night but it's kind of hard to stick in your window. <laughs> the nice convenient thing This is one of the reasons why I really like this Flying J app. You can feel right from your vehicle. You just gotta set up your card. Ooh, I'm gonna do all three. Cause you just never know in the winter weather. You should always make sure you got topped up on everything. No, I don't need nothing else. Actually, I should have got washer fluid. Rats. I'll get them on, on my next one. So there you go. There's the code, and you just put it into the machine. Eight, nine, six, nine, seven, five. Turn. Time for the reefer to turn on and make noise. Ah, beautiful. 
they got my decaf. This is the one I like right here. Do you know which one's the hot and which one's the cold? Yeah, click on it again. I believe uh, the blue ones would be the cold and then the red ones would be the hot. Really? Yep. Yeah, it says iced. Oh, okay, ones. okay. And then the refill and then, yep. Yeah. Pretty sure that's how it works. And what size are the large ones? They are 24 ounces. Oh, perfect. Or the tw large right there. This one? Yep. It should just fill it up and then it's going to ask you if you want to leave room for your creamer. All right, thank you. I need some room for creamer. French vanilla. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I need to get two of the Nestle's packs of water outside. Okay. I'll probably take my coffee to my truck first and then come back and get it. So when you see some guy running off with it, you'll know that's me. You're free to go, I got you with those waters. Great, thank you, but dear. If hollers at you, tell them to come see me. All right, thanks. <laughs> bye bye. First of all, let's put this in here. Open up this. Go back and get our water. Uh, too bad they didn't have them outside. It would have been nice and cold. Perfect. Two twenty-eight packs. So as I was saying, when I was trying to get my groceries in BC, they had no water in the Walmarts because everybody was hoarding. Thank you. Couldn't get any water. Well, they had the the Walmart water, but it's terrible. Maybe I can get both of them in here. You don't want both of them in here, Ray. There you go. And when it's in here too, it keeps it cool, but it doesn't freeze. And then I just keep the other one right there. And because <laughs> I took my eyes off my trailer. I know some of you are getting tired of hearing this. But you know what? This video is also to help people new in the industry. Whenever you take your eyes off your trailer, if you go into the store, always come back, check your pin, check your trailer, make sure the seal hasn't been compromised. Uh, and whatever else. Do a visual of your tires. Always do a little spot check every time. Oh, man. I've heard stories where people's pins get pulled, people pull the seal right off the back of the trailer and check and see what's inside of it while the guy's inside. Some place, it happens, it does. Hmm. Don't be a victim.
like we got a little bit of an accident that just happened. Yeah. Not good. Oh, that must have been a ride. Just slip right off the road. Because there is a snow cloud that just made its way over. Oh man, you don't like to see that. You don't like to see that stuff. Yeah, not good. But you know what? They had a sign up there, back behind there, saying, slow down, slush. Not good at all. Just about ready to go. I'm at this uh, truck stop here in Laramie Travel Center, if they want to call it a travel center. They seem to have the cheapest fuel prices around, but it is a real challenge to go inside this place because it's very, very, very dirty. Bathrooms are terrible. Can't even close the stall doors. And um, looks like the place needs a stick of dynamite and they need to start over. It's really, really bad in there. The only thing they got going for them is they have brand new pumps over here, but of course they got to keep the money flowing in, right? It's too bad they didn't renovate the building first. Make it more inviting for the drivers. And there's a lot, a lot of truck stops that really do do a wonderful job. like. Common Sense and some Pilots and Flying J's and some Loves and some TA's. <laughs> but there are a lot out there that uh, don't really care about the welfare or well-being of their drivers. They just want to make sure they make the money and you can leave now. And you see a lot of it. And this place is a uh, prime example. But I didn't spend a lot of time in there. I just washed up this morning and whatever. And then we're gonna make our way over to Aurora. Now, I'm leaving early enough now so I can take a 10 off when I get there. And um, and then I can go do my delivery at Unify because that could take a long time, I was told. 
I heard some reviews that some of the drivers there will get there at their appointment, say two o'clock in the morning. And uh, it takes four or five hours to get in a door, and then it takes another four or five hours to get their paperwork. And it's not uncommon for you to be there eight hours, six to seven, eight hours. So I'm expecting that. I don't always believe all reviews, but all the reviews at this place are terrible. I mean, I think there's a couple that said I was out on time, but I, and also saw a few people said too that the, uh, the bills were lost. They lose the bills a lot there. Very, very disorganized. So when I get to where I'm located, I'm parking for the night or day <laughs> I'm gonna pull out my cam scanner which is a little app that you can take pictures of paperwork and then you can convert it to PDF and email it so that's how I mail in my email my bills of lading to my uh, accounting department so they can have the copies of the bills before they get it in the envelopes so I'm gonna take Complete. I'm going to make a copy of all my bills, and I have a lot of them, just to be on the safe side. So if they lose them and say, oh, we can't find them, I can say, I got them right here. Because you just never know. Cover your tail, right? Cover your tail. So it's a toss-up between the TA, um, uh, the Flying J, or the Sap Brothers. So I'm going to be making my, because it's Sunday, I think it's Sunday today. I'm just gonna make and make my way in the normal way into uh, into the Denver area. I won't take the bypass. I'm gonna need to, and then I will kind of just check the situation out and see if Sap Brothers has an available. I'd like to go to Aurora because Aurora is right next to where I'm delivering, but that place is a real madhouse. It's a nightmare. Try to get in and out of there because people park everywhere, and because. It is a weekend. There's a lot of locals that park their trucks there, so I don't know if I want to go to Aurora. But I will check the status of the parking before when I get into town, and if it says there's spots available, then I'll take an opportunity to go down there and see if I can get in there. If not, I'll find another place to park. But we're just about ready to go, and uh, they're expecting some really nasty wind out here. About 60 mile an hour gusts. This is another reason why I want to leave early because I don't want to be caught in that uh, because my trailer is half full and I don't want to be sh pushed around on the, on the interstate. There's nothing worse. I can deal with all other elements, snow, ice, everything, rain, wind is the worst because you can't see it coming. Unless you're watching, you see the tumbleweed fly across the road and you just hold on and you know the gust is coming. Or if you see dust in the fields or whatever, but a lot of the time you can't see the wind. When it's a clear day and the wind is hitting you, yeah, it can be really nasty. But the wind hasn't started here yet. I can tell from all the dust on the trucks that come into this parking lot that it's, the wind isn't here yet. So I think I'm leaving at the right time. And I've said enough this morning. Let's get going.
I'm about a mile and a half from my turn off. I decided I'm gonna stop at the Sap Brothers uh, truck stop. I remember when I stopped at the Flying J in Aurora, it was an absolute cluster muck. It was a nightmare. And uh, I remember even if you got into a spot, people were blocking you and it was just not much fun at all. Not much fun at all. And that place, the TA, about 75 or 90%, I can't remember what it is now. It's all reserve parking. That's a typical TA for you in a major city. So I am gonna hit the Sap Brothers over here and see if they have a spot available for me. I do know that that's actually a nice truck stop. It's actually clean in there. Not terribly thrilled with this next door, triple, triple X place, but the truck stop in itself. The store, the bathrooms, everything, I think are pretty good. Wasn't a big fan of the parking lot because it gets pretty dark in there at night. But it won't matter. I'll be leaving. At about, probably. Oh, nice roads, eh? Someone told me one time they put all their earnings from all the dope they legalized to their roads. Uh, I don't know if I believe that. That doesn't seem very accurate. <laughs> oh, boy, 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 boy. These are terrible roads. Okay. Just gotta remember where how you get there. Uh, yeah, I think this is it here. What a beautiful day it is out here though, it's nice. Yeah, what is it, four Celsius? It's very, very nice. So there's the Sap Brothers ahead there. Yeah, and they have, uh, I think a way better option of being more comfortable than the Flying J by the Monster. And I've been here before, so. Uh, I'll see here. And the nice thing about it is I have bread and it's all boxed. So I don't have to worry about getting the trailer washed out. I just have to give it a good sweep. And what's going in it anyway is, is, is flour. So. Uh, all right, let's see here. The moment of truth. Uh, see what I'm talking about? These roads are horrendous. Horrendous. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, we'll go see here if they got any spots of that. What am I going to do all day? My delivery is tomorrow morning at 2 in the morning. So I'm just going to work on a production. Maybe record a Bible break. I know that little series I'm doing on Joseph seems to be going really well. Oh my word, this is crazy. I can only imagine how rough this would be trying to drive through here. Um, how do you get into this place again? I totally forget how you get into the parking lot. Well, let's see. It's not confusing by any means. Not by any means. Gee, look at the scrapes on this concrete here. The people have taken that out. Oh, wow. Okay, so this isn't the main parking area. That's handicapped, that's handicapped. I think that's all reserved. That's all gonna be reserved back there. That's all gonna be reserved. At least I think that's what yeah, that is. Oh, let's hope we can get a spot here. They look pretty busy in here. Probably because most people are going to be delivering on Monday. But this is what they do in the major cities. They just put reservations on every parking stall. This wasn't like this before. 
This was not like this before. Oh my, is this all reserved? That spot isn't. This spot's free. Is there a bobtail sitting in there? No, there is not. So let's see if we can squeeze in here. But my windows are really filthy. I don't know how much fun it's gonna to be to get into that spot. Uh, you know what? I got such a glare on my window, I don't wanna even try to squeeze in there because I can't see very well. So here's a double spot. I'll make my life easier doing this. This works for me. So I'm gonna park my trailer. Go inside and uh, yeah, maybe clean up a little bit and then come back out and have some breakfast. Because I haven't even had breakfast yet. place is a real cluster muck it's hard to back into these spots I was watching one guy earlier poor guy man he must have taken 25 minutes to try to back in there's just not a lot of room here yeah I'm all settled in here and um, it's amazing all day today this place has been packed there's been barely any parking spots available. A lot of the stuff we see in front of us here, this is all reserved. Most of it down here is all reserved. This is all free and everyone's trying to squeeze in there. And uh, that just goes to show you how busy it is out here in the, in the Denver area. I'm sure that TA is full over there and the one in Aurora, I wasn't even going to attempt to go up there. But uh, you know, this is a really nice location because the um, the store inside, I was going to take you guys inside, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, it is nice and clean in there. The people are so friendly. They have some good food in there. I bought some ice cream. I bought some ice cream. I love my chocolate ice cream. So I decided, well, when I come back, I'm going to put it in my fridge. I don't know if it's really going to remain frozen by the time my dinner is done. So I make my way back over here to my truck and I decide... Well, I could put it in my fridge, but it's not gonna stay frozen. I thought, hey, you don't have a seal on the free or on the reefer. You got a lock on the back that you put on. Stick it in the back of the of the reefer. It's at minus 10. It'll stay nice and frozen in there. So I open up the back doors, and I should have took a picture to show you, but they've got one final row of bread, but they're stacked on top of each other. I don't know why they didn't put them side by side. They have them on top of each other one skid on top of another and I'm looking at this and it it's tilted to one side the one box underneath looks like it's almost being crushed because it's tilted and I'm like oh man if they see that over there at Unify they probably will reject the bottom one so I had to go in the back there and restack them just I don't know why anybody would do something like that why would you stack two skids on top of each other it's bread when you can put them side by side and there's like another half a trailer available. I don't get what people, I don't get these shippers. I really don't. I don't know who the shipper was that sent this. But, um, so hopefully they won't reject the, uh, the load there. So, um, I mean, I can't unwrap everything because it's wrapped up in uh, cellophane, uh, shrink wrap but I just, I tried to straighten it out and do the best I very, very best I could. So, hopefully it'll be okay. We'll find out at 
2 o'clock in the morning or whenever they decide. So I'll take it easy going down there and I'll make sure I don't take any corners real sharp. And, um, and when I get there in the staging area, I'll open up the back again and just check and make sure everything looks good because I want to make sure the product's good. I mean, the product's not ruined. There's one box in the bottom that looks a little bit squished, but what do you expect when you put a skid on top of another skid of bread? I, I, I don't know why they would do that. So maybe one box might be compromised. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. So I'm going to make myself some, din some dinner and then uh, I think I'm just going to relax for the rest of the night. I was working on a video, but I have tendonitis in my hand and this is the one I use the mouse with and man I can only use that mouse for so long so again if my videos are delayed it's a real challenge for me to get these things done because of the tendonitis in my hand. It's really acting up right now I don't know what what I did to, to have it flare up the way it is. So I gotta start taking some turmeric I think that'll help. But I was gonna get some when I was in the store but when I was out in the lower mainland everyone was hoarding everything I didn't have time to look for special things like turmeric. Or, um, or anything else like that. So, um, yeah, just gonna relax and have my dinner and uh, enjoy the show, because it is a show trying to watch people back into some of these places. See you in the early, 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 early morning. Good early morning. It's about 12, just a little after 12 midnight. And uh, I'm making my way over to the receiver. And I'm gonna be extra careful the bumps I go over so I don't have, end up with anything shifting on me. But, um, now here's a speed bump here. <laughs> yeah, from all the reviews that I read, uh, it doesn't look too good. <laughs> but you know what? It is what it is. I can tell you one thing right now. I would much rather be sitting at Unify um, waiting to be unloaded than traveling on the Highway 3 in Vancouver going up. Highway 3 and up to Coquella Highway because now Highway 3 has been opened and that is a very very dangerous road especially in the winter time and with a lot of inexperienced drivers driving that road that aren't used to it uh, it's just going to become increasingly more dangerous so I'm counting my blessings that this is where I am and if you're wondering why I'm going as slow as I am because there's some nasty roads up here and I just don't want to shift that load again but while I'm in the uh, staging area, I'll take another look at it. Once I get onto the interstate, I'll be fine. But these roads are terrible. They really are. So I got another, I don't know, not very long, 16 minutes to go before I get up there. This guy behind me is probably wondering what I'm doing. But I just want to make sure nothing shifts. So we'll make our way over to Unify and we'll see how long it takes for them to get me unloaded.
Why not, eh? Do you think we're gonna check in? Hmm? Do we need to fill one of these out? Yeah. Ah. Number. Okay, can you let me know if you can read the phone number, okay? There you have it. There you have it. Okay. Now I guess we just go back to our truck and it's time to lay down. Because I don't know how long this is going to take. This place looks pretty busy. Well my friends, what was the outcome of Unify? Well I sat there for six hours. I got out of there at 7 a.m. Six hours to unload a half a trailer. I think that's quite normal over there, but they didn't lose my bills, give them that much. From there, I went on to Commerce City to pick up a load of uh, flour that I took back to Abbotsford. So that was the wrap up of that, um, that delivery. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, two things I wanted to mention, for those of you that were looking for the Bible break, it has been uploaded separately because of the length of it. No, I have not stopped doing the Bible break. It's been uploaded because it's longer than average, and I didn't want to extend the video to two hours, <laughs> so to speak. I also wanted to ask if you guys would please keep a dear friend of mine in prayer. She's a very sweet lady. Um, she comments quite a bit. Um, on my videos and she's been watching for a long time she sends me emails and she's a very very dear friend of mine and right now she's uh, recently she's been diagnosed with cancer and um, I'm asking that you would please keep her in prayer the Lord knows who this amazing woman is if you can just please keep her in prayer that the Lord will provide a healing in her life and that his will will be done so God bless you all in the precious name of Yeshua and until next time, bye for now.